Okay, we're working on the 45 motor here again. We gotta get the left seal put in here on the main shaft. We just got done cutting down this washer over here. I made up this little tool right here to hold it. So this is cut 25 deep. It holds the washer like that. Oop, pops right in. And I go against my surface grinder and grind on it. The water holds it in there. The water's what keeps it from burning up. So we got it down to 20, uh, 25, 26 now. Varies just slightly. So this is 25 and we're just hitting on it. So that gives us a couple thou clearance of in play. So this goes here into the little titty hole down under here. Right down there. It keeps it from rotating. You don't want this to rotate because then it would knock this clip out if it did. Where's our uh, main bearing at? Okay, so with this set up here we got right now. The rollers right now are just about flush. We're gonna get a couple thou above the surface of this. Well, ideally you want those to be above the surface here, you know, the roller be below, the surface being higher. That way when you push up against this thrust bearing, you won't be locking up against the cage, you'll be locking up against the bearing. You don't want to lock up this roller because it's not made to be taken thrust. If you do, you have a problem. Now we already got this washer here, adapter ring, right here, made, this piece here is made to be flush with this. Now if we cut this thinner here, we would gain clearance, but the problem is we would have to make this one here thinner also to keep up with it. Where's our notch at? There's our little notch right there. Here, pops right on there like that. Now when we assemble this, we'll put a little Loctite on that to help hold it in place. That's what centers the bearing. So right now everything goes together. We got our end play back that we didn't have, but everything is really, really close. Is that in there? Doesn't feel, doesn't feel right. I think that's not going in and out very easily. Hmm. It was fighting me there. I got it. I'm pretty quick at it. Done it more than once. Okay, now I'm going to make sure that's in that little groove, which it is not right now. There, unless it's sitting in that groove, which is right there. It has to be in that groove or it doesn't sit flat. We have to mark that thing so we know where it's at. There it is. There. No, it's not. Before I wouldn't flop. It's flop now. That's how close everything is. Okay, so the right side's done now. Now we're going to work on the left side. So we're going to put this piece in here and see what kind of clearance we're going to have. We're going to hold out, use a tripod. Light's still on. Now this should be a press fit in here, but we'll see. If it's not a press fit, it'll leak oil out of it. You don't like that? <laughs> you want to use a new snap ring? You want the one that actually works. Uh, that one, we know that one fits. We well, does. You want to use that one or use this one? Use the one that's in there. Okay, the one that actually fits in there? Okay, I like that plan. Okay, so this puts a seal on the end of a crank. But unless it seals on the OD of this, it's going to leak. So Ideally, you want this to be a press fit. <laughs> Excuse me. See how it's a press fit. So, I'm going to take this thing right now, put it in here, and press it all the way through the whole bearing race. By the time you got to the other side over there, it probably wouldn't be a press fit anymore, at least not much. But it would scar up the surface that we're used to get that nice bearing surface in. 
it would scar that up. You can't push this in past a clip, so what I do is I pull the clip out, push it in, and then push it back the other direction. Let's see what's going on with my pliers. Okay, there's our original clip. Now, you cannot put the clip in if you have this in there. It doesn't squeeze in enough to let it in. So you have to push this in past the snap ring groove, put the clip in it, and push this back. Got that? So we have to push this in straight in right now. So we're going to need a tool for doing that. And then after the clip is in there, we get to push it all back. All right, so I'm going to take all these tools with us. I need something that fits inside of here. There it is. Is that close enough? Okay, that'll work. Enough. Okay, now you put the clip in. I usually like to have the snap ring on the top. Precision, huh? You make sure the clip is all the way in. Now you take it up, rotate it a little bit to make sure it's in there. Now we flip it over. Something rest on here. I didn't get that yet. Okay, now you put that in there and push it down until the bottom's out, but don't push it through. Good and tight. There you go. Does it work for you, Bill? But there's still a thrust washer on here, too? We don't have to run against this surface. This is a I take a little bit of 290 capillary action Loctite and we Loctite this thing in and it seals it. This is capillary action so it sucks into any orifice that's available to go to and then it sets up and there's no air. So I put a little bit of a drop on there like that. We got that little screw right there. Yeah, it just disappeared. Now it's going to Loctite that whole groove in there on the snap ring. And it should fill up the whole surface at some point. See how it just disappears? So it's yeah. sucking in. It's gone, yeah. No, but see, we want to make sure it's not coming through this side. It is not. So that means it's filling up a void in there. If it's filling up a void, that's a, a galley, galley to leak through, or a gap. 
You see how it's starting to slow down now? Mm. But it still took it all. So I just, <clears throat> I just keep pouring it in there until it comes out the other side, which we don't want to do. Or it goes around the whole circle where you can see it all around the whole thing. The next thing you do is you can take uh, some three bond and let it sit up overnight and fill up that whole void, which I will do. Also, see how it still is not coming through? <clears throat> so that means it's still sucking it all through here. It's clipped, the snap ring's getting all filled up full of the stuff. Everything is getting filled in right now, which is good. See, it just kind of disappears. So I don't know where it's all going right now. But. Well, yeah, you can still see the through the gap in the split washer. Yeah, well, that's going So you're going to keep pouring it in there, and at some point it will take quit taking it. to leaking out into this side and pouring down this side that's all and right now I still don't see any evidence of it on that side yet now I push it with the press so it should be all the way against the snap ring but there'd be a groove you know snap rings in a groove so right now I'd be filling up the whole back side of the groove the gap between the snap ring and the seal spacer all everything's getting filled now you can either put quit, keep pouring it in there or you just say that's enough and let it be you have lots of money, so we'll just keep pouring this Loctite in there. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you know, so the studio already lets you put it right where you want it. It's going away pretty slow now, so it's, Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. It's not just a <laughs> and gone, you know. <laughs> I think that's probably enough because it's obviously it's starting to get filled up. Like I said after you go home tonight, I'll I'll take the case and leave it like this, and I'll I'll take my three bond sealer here, you know, put it all through here and let's let it sit up in there and, and just put a B all the way in it. This will take up the gap on the outside edge. So between the two of those, it should seal up everything. And we got nothing coming through yet. Nope, still dry. All right. See how it come back up on the surface a little bit. When we mm -hmm. that? Okay. We'll let it drain a little while. Okay. Now this here, you have to figure out what you want this to rub against. So we have one washer here. So we can either put this on the inside or the outside. See how the Loctite stays in there. Mm -hmm. It will drip out at some point if it wants to, though. Okay, where's our, uh, didn't we have a, uh, oh, it's on the flywheel. Yeah, we had one of these. We had some bearings on the other side, it looks like, too, they disappeared. Okay, so what part do you want the roller to rub against? Do you want to stick out inside of here? the rollers are flush with the cage which means it won't do any bearing that means the bearing race would be way out here so that tells us we want this bearing to go in this direction like this sitting there like that there's a bearing there it is that one fell out it's trying to get away now right now We want to make sure the roller is not tight against this race. Right now, I think that roller is rubbing on that on that adapter a little bit. So, how thick is the adapter? Okay, this is 38 thousandths. So, if this is higher than 38, we're hitting on a roller like before. We're at 52, so. Mm -hmm. So that means this is sticking in too far that way. But the 
problem is, is you can't shorten it because that's what 140. Yeah. That can only be 15 though. This thing is not zeroed. We obviously had it unzeroed for a reason. Okay, that's 54 thou. This is 80 almost, 75 thou. So that means we already got almost no register because this clip is so thick. So it's barely catching on that right now. And if this thing was to slide over with our clearance, we would lose more and it could drop off like that. And we got our implant, our crank. So right now we are so thin it could drop off this way like that. So ideally right now at this point we'd want this thing to be a little bit thicker sticking up. But I don't know if we have room in our bearings to allow that. So we have to find out if we got clearance. Okay, so these bearings are going to be rubbing against that surface there. Like that. I'm not seeing we had to wash see we didn't we had to wash her in there before but see now we don't have room for the washer see how this is sticking up above the surface mm -hmm. we don't have this much room see how thick that would be yes so About 30 thou is sticking up right now <coughs> above the bearing surface. So we're uh, we're basically running out of clearance on this. I'm not sure the difference in depth between here and here. Okay, that's about 45. That's about 80. So you got 35 thou. Between here and that, and we were out how much? 48, I think we're short. I think we ran out of clearance again. Hmm. The next thing is what point is that roller going to dig into this? Sleeping its way out that time. Mm -hmm. Sitting up upside down enough it comes out. No, this is 65 thick. Okay. 65. How thick was this? 80. Ew. So we're, we had the same problem before. We have the this bearing is going to lock up on that lip. We don't have enough room. Hmm. I think we're coming up short. So to get clearance, we're going to have to cut, take this out, cut that thing thinner, and we'll put it back in. The other problem is this surface here is going to be rubbing on that surface, which is not, it's not supposed to be a wearing surface there, but we don't really have a lot of uh, options in the deal on that one. All right, so what are we gonna do here for our clearancing? I guess to find out for sure, we're gonna to put it together and see if we have negative clearances. That's gonna be our only option at this point. The mail's here late.
Okay, our favorite part fell out. So if you put a little bit of oil on it this time, it'll stay put. Together we know we had 15,000 player, right? Yep, something just fell. Damn it, is this? That's why I'm going to jump our mock up for doing the bearings. <laughs> we have to take all that Loctite out of the other side over here and redo it. See, we had a lot of clearance before, but that was before. That's good. Did you hear that noise? At least we got in play. Obviously, we're not bottoming out. I'm binding. Yeah, we're not bottomed. So we have some inflow. I just don't know how much on the rollers. I have no access to rollers because that's in there. So. Looks like we didn't lose anything, so I'm guessing we have enough clearance, but we don't have clearance for that. I don't think. We can always put it in there and find out, I guess. That would definitely tell us what we got. That's 47 pal. I'd be shocked if we could put that thing in there. But I've been shocked before on this project. Too close. You're looking at a hammer. I mean, all the hate comments about the videoing. <laughs>
I hear all the comments about doing glue in here and putty to see how much gap we got. You just watch. See that? See what happened? Oh yeah. We don't have hardly anything after clearance. So. Doesn't surprise me one bit. <coughs> Probably measure from here. That I'll take that and zero out the caliper. direction. You don't want to do that. We've got 850, 860. We're 850 on the thin side. I'm going to go with 850. So we have 850. even got a number on it. Zero it. 120,000. Yeah, minus this. Forty-five. Since we got sixty, we know we don't have sixty. That would fit. It's like before. I, we don't get accurate numbers when. Add the mouth up. So what am I doing wrong? Because these stick up above the surface, that's why I get nares. You have to take into account how deep it is from here to the other number. I'm gonna stop for that. Okay, we're back. I think we have enough room for the washer, so I'm doing a mock-up. We didn't have it over the lip of the case. It went over the lip. So I have that washer in there. And it's in there. It's in there. So that protects the uh, seal race. Yeah. So that's our full clearance. We haven't lost anything. It looked like there's going to be about five cell extra. So when I put the washer in, I measure from the bearing to the top. I can't really measure it roller. I can only just kind of guess where it, where it hits against. It's a small edge here. But it looked like there's plenty of room for the washer. So I just threw it together and that works. So we'll go with it. So that protects the uh, the bearing race because you have a washer that rubs, that turns with whatever it wants to. It's free floating. So that makes it work good. So we're all right. So we don't have to mess with the seal. Yeah. I'm still concerned about those rollers that they could actually physically go in too deep and cut on that, on that spacer. So what I do is we make a spacer where I can bring that up that inner edge comes up so the roller can't rub on the lip. And we can always grind this washer down a little bit like we did before. I can bring that back up where the cage has got some more support because we only had about 50 at most on that thing. So I can build those two surfaces up a little bit and I can always cut them back a little bit and play with the washer here. So we got some more playing to do. 
and bring it out because this one up being a 316 stick washer here instead of a 60 like we're planning so that moved everything way out but that's probably why it's, there's room for that washer because we got that extra 16th of a you know thickness in there otherwise we wouldn't have that I don't think <clears throat> yeah it works pretty good like that so we're good I'm good with that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean this all up and then uh, put the, uh, the sealer in there I'm going to let it sit overnight, a couple nights, to set up all the way. So when you come back, it'll be nice and gray over there. But I'm going to have to make up that uh, the new inner sleeve. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll probably grind the washer a little bit too, because I can use the same tool here for grinding the washer. We'll make it sure it's nice and flat. And if I have to take off 20 thou or 15 thou, we can do that too. It's not going to hurt it any. It's just best if you're not rubbing, rubbing against the surface that has no wearing and stuff on it. So, looks like it might work. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah. The right side is the biggest problem. The left side I think will be uh, not too bad on. Still going to require a little bit of shimming, plain. We like that. Yeah. Like I said, I'll build up that lip to come up uh, more flush with the uh, bearing, like I did on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I can take the inner part where it was real thin, I can fatten that up. And that would bring this whole roller up and get it off of the, the edge. <sighs> Excuse me. That way the cage cannot rub against this bearing right here and lock it up. We don't want it. We don't. We want to make sure there's clearance. This roll has always got a gap in it when it, when everything else is bottomed out. Right now, that lip will come up and hit against this roller and start locking it up for the roller to eat the lip away. Either way, I don't like either one of those two options. Not to make more of them anyway, so I'll just make it a little bit thicker. But anyway, that'll work that way. So that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this all up. Hook it up. See you next week. Yes. I'm going to play with this a little bit. To wipe out the excess Loctite here because what happens is it seeps up to the top of the, the uh, sealer and causes issues. So it leaves a bubble possibly inside of it, which we don't want. The problem is this keeps seeping up more and more of it every time I do this. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that sit overnight so that dries, because lack of air is what dries the Loctite. So once this dries in here all the way, then I can come by and put the sealer on it over here, the three bond, which is this gray crap right over here, and that will seal it up. And I'll put a nice layer all the way around there and fill up that whole void in there with it. So right now it just keeps pulling up the, uh, the Loctite keeps coming up, so I don't want to fight it. So I'll go show you what it looks like when it's done, because I did my race bike a couple years ago, my motor on my race bike. Go back in the dark archives over here. Yeah, I figure this way you can't get to it. It's this motor over here. It appears it's well tucked away and hidden. 
so nobody can get to it. Nobody knows where it is unless you watch the video, right? Oh my God. Hidden crap under here. Yeah. There you go. It looked like that. So you get a nice good seal all the way around the whole thing. And that would stop her from leaking through there. But you gotta make sure there's no residue of any oil, or grease, or Loctite on top of that surface. Otherwise it will leak past it. So, so anyway, that's what it looks like. We'll have it like that when it's all done. So we'll probably show it to you next week. Maybe I'll put my race bike motor together some here. Yeah. For now it sits. It's in a safe spot. We run other bikes this season. We'll run this one next year again. All right, so that's where we're at for this one for now. We're gonna let this thing dry up. I'll come back tomorrow and goop it up and let it dry for another couple days. And then I'll see if I got time to make me another washer, which probably won't happen. Well, we'll see how that goes. All right, that's it for now.